What's going on guys and welcome back to Footy with an Edge. Manchester United have finally done it. They finally managed to win a game this season without any drama. They also kept a clean sheet in what feels like forever and we won our first game away from home. Look, it wasn't vintage United by any stretch of the imagination today. In fact, Burnley were probably the better team in possession for large stretches of that game. But guess what? Eric Ten Hag will not care one bit about who played the better football today because God knows we needed those three points. But we're not here to dissect the team performance from that game. We're here to talk about our star striker Rasmus Hoyland and what Ten Hag can do to improve his game. We have tons of clips from the game to analyze, so some of this will be similar to actual conversations that Eric Ten Hag might have with Hoyland after this game. So make sure you stay till the end of the video to catch everything. As always, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what's about to come. And don't forget to turn on all notifications to never miss out on content just like this. So far this season, we've seen Ten Hag use Hoyland in one of two ways. As the primary striker in a two-striker formation in front of the diamond midfield, or as the primary striker in the 4-2-3-1 with two wingers on either side. In today's game, we played the 4-2-3-1, where we had two sitting midfielders in Casemiro and McTominay, with Hannibal Mabry in the 10 role in what was his first start for United, if I'm correct. And then you had Rashford, Hoyland, and Bruno as the front three. But even in this primary striker role in the 4-2-3-1, Hoyland can be deployed in multiple ways based on who is in the front line with him. When Anthony plays in the right in the system, Hoyland actually has to play a very selfless role because he's technically holding up the play for both wingers to run in behind and get shots off. So he actually doesn't get a lot of service by himself. When Bruno Fernandes or Pelistri play on the right in this shape, Hoyland actually does get a bit more involved in the final third because there's more space on the right-hand side to make those diagonal runs that he was so good at when playing at At Atalanta. And this is mainly because Bruno and Pelistri are more pass-first wingers and they're both good at dropping into more central areas in the second phase of build-up in the middle third. So based on everything we've just discussed here, Hoyland was expected to offer hold-up play with his back to goal today. He was expected to get Rashford and Bruno in behind when he does successfully hold up the play and there's space for these guys to get in behind. And he was also expected to run the channels himself as a target for long balls that Onana played up to him or one of the center backs played him. So let's watch some clips from the game to see what Hoyland actually did and how well he did it. We're going to kick things off by talking through some of the better things I saw from Rasmus Hoyland in today's game versus Burnley, and then we're going to get to some of the things that he needs improvements on, so make sure you stay till the end of the video. We start here with this moment in the 30th minute where Marcus Rashford is picking up the ball on the left-hand side. You can kind of see Scott McTominay making this diagonal run into this channel over here where there's a bunch of space between the Burnley center back and the Burnley right back. As we play along, you can kind of see how McTominay's movement draws the right center back out of position and leaves this big space through the middle for Rasmus Hoyland to potentially get into. And that's exactly what he does by receiving the ball to feet over here, holding off the defender really well in this space, and then doing a ball roll with his feet to get into position to shoot and gets the shot off really quickly. Now what we saw right there might not look like much, but tell me when is the last time you've seen someone in a United shirt do something just like that? Martial or Rashford don't have the strength to bully players like that. Cavani and Ronaldo were both fox in the box type strikers who would rather use their clever movements inside the box then use their bodies to make it difficult for central defenders. So personally, I don't think this specific point got emphasized enough when we signed Hoyland in the summer. He is a completely new weapon at Eric Ten Hag's disposal, something that we haven't seen at United for a long time, but something that Ten Hag is actually very used to in his managerial career, like Sebastian Haller for that one season at Ajax where he scored 34 goals in all competitions and also had 9 assists. I think people focused way too much on his pace and his height in the Erling Haaland comparisons, but forgot about the fact that he is very strong and he knows how to use that strength to position his body against defenders very, very well. And at this young age, that's kind of a rare skill. 
This next clip is from the 51st minute in the second half where Scott McTominay is surrounded in the Burnley box and he's trying to find a way out. As we play it along, you can see that Hannibal gets into space and that Dallow is actually on acres of space on the right hand side over here. Now pay attention to Rasmus Hoyland who's right here in this area. He is marked very tightly by the Burnley center back. As Dallow receives this ball over here and he's about to cross it in, Look at how Hoyland has made a yard or two from the center back for himself, which is effectively blindsiding that center back over here. Now that gives Hoyland two options. When the ball comes in from Dallow, he can either cut in front of this first center back, or he can go from behind him and try to tap it in. And as Dallow fires in an excellent cross, you can see that Hoyland's already on the move and he tries to get a touch on that ball, but he narrowly misses out. Now from this clip right here, you can see some of Hoyland's attacking intelligence coming into play. This is the type of fox in the box movement that we haven't seen since Cavani and Ronaldo left the club. And of course, he's nowhere near their level of quality yet. But for a player that's really only played two seasons of first team football, this is a very promising sign of what's to come. Next, let's talk about the parts of Hoyland's game that he needs to work on by talking through some of the following clips starting with our first clip from the 30th minute in the first half, where we have Bruno and Casemiro starting a counter-attack. As we play it along, you can see that Casemiro tries to drive forward with the ball, but he actually gets tackled by number five in Burnley here, and the ball goes forward. Notice how Hoyland is immediately alive to the fact that he has to change his run from just simply running in behind over here and try to bend it so that he can catch the loose ball. As Hoyland picks up the ball and starts driving forward, with Bruno, Mabry, and Rashford in support, as you guys can see here, it's clear that he has more than one option to pass to, or even use them as a decoy to find a shot for himself. As he gets further forward to the edge of the box, I'm gonna stop it right there. Now, let's analyze the decisions that he can potentially make. With four Burnley defenders around him, it doesn't look like he has a lot of space to maybe get off a good shot. So the best option really to keep the attack progressing is the pass out to Mabry on this channel here, which he can either do through these two players over here, or he can just maybe pass it straight to him over here. The poorer alternative to that is to maybe stop on the ball so that some of these players run past him and he finds a passing angle over to Bruno or Rashford. But Hoyland decides to, you know, keep going with the ball and he ends up taking a little too long and number five buyer gets a tackle onto him. And even now at this point, a pass out to Bruno or Mabry is a great option because Bruno can either shoot or maybe dink a ball out to Mabry or Mabry can go towards the byline and put in a cross for Rashford on the far left. But again, he takes too long and Bayer manages to put in a tackle and Hoyland loses the ball. Now you can see how Hoyland's hesitant decision making in this scenario has wasted a great counter-attacking opportunity for Manchester United because by the time he loses the ball, Pretty much all 10 Burnley players are behind the ball and they're set in their defensive shape. And this opportunity actually came up when we were at 0-0 in the first half, which on a different day could be one of our only opportunities to score in a game. So Ten Hag will definitely be highlighting this sequence to Hoyland and saying, you have to make that pass to Mabry, Bruno or Rashford and get yourself into the box early much like you did for that Dallow cross in that second half. We want you to be the goal scorer in this team who is getting on the end of things and leave the incisive final third passes to someone like Bruno and leave the one-on-one -on -one dribbles to someone like Rashford or Anthony. Focus on your primary role in the team, which is being a center forward. Next, let's look at this clip from the 80th minute where we have another counter-attacking opportunity with Rasmus Hoyland involved. We start with the Burnley player on the right wing who's looking for a 1-2 with someone on the inside so he can run in behind. As we play along, Evans is actually able to intercept the ball that is played inside by the Burnley player. And as he receives it, he plays it out to Rashford who plays it to Mabry and the ball is back with Evans over here. Now let's look at the attacking threats available to Man United with the ball at Evans' feet. Rashford is running into space on the left hand side while the Burnley fullback number 14 is actually caught out in the center over here. The Burnley left back is also out of position over here, number three. So Bruno Fernandes also has a ton of space in behind on the right hand side. Now Evans decides to play it out through the middle to Hoyland's feet. And as we play along a bit further, you can see how much space we actually have both on the left and the right with Bruno and Rashford. And in this situation, a ball to either Rashford or Bruno 
would be amazing here. But personally, I think the right pass here is out to Bruno for two reasons. Number one, because Hoyland doesn't need to change his body shape to make that pass to Bruno. He can just make it with the inside of his foot as soon as he turns around. Whereas for a pass to Rashford, he needs to open up his body so that he can make the pass into this lane over here. The second reason why Bruno is the right pass in this situation is because Bruno is a much, much better decision maker in the final third. He can either shoot and score, or he could receive it in this area, get to the byline, and maybe put a cross in for Rashford on the far left. But Hoyland decides to open his body and play a pass into Rashford, as we know from the game, and he leaves it well short for Rashford, which means the play dies right here. And again, this is an example of suboptimal decision making in the final third, because to me, Hoyland just chose the wrong pass. But this time, his execution was also poor because he played the pass really short. Like I said with the previous clip, this could be one of the very few chances we get in a game, and you simply cannot screw up these simple decisions. In this final clip, we have Casemiro winning the ball just inside the Burnley half in the 87th minute, and he's about to play it over the top into Hoyland over here. As we play it along, Hoyland actually manages to hold up the ball really well and play it into Mabry's path, who's still trying to kind of get it under control. As we play it a bit further, Mabry gets into a bit of a tight space with two Burnley players around him, but he actually manages to squeeze a pass through to Bruno on the inside. Now, if we take a moment to see what's going on here, notice how Hoyland's movement into the left channel has done two things. It has freed up space for Rashford to move in centrally, which is obviously going to cause problems for uh, the Burnley defenders who are trying to mark him. And it's also created this massive hole in the inside left channel for both Bruno and Casemiro, who's off screen, to come and exploit. So as Bruno plays it up to Hoyland, look at how Casemiro is raising his hand for the ball in this area over here. Because if Hoyland manages to get this ball right, Casemiro just has to play a simple ball through to Dallo, who's overlapping on the right hand side. And Dallo can probably get a really nice shot onto goal or even cross it in for Rashford who's get, trying to get in behind over here. But unfortunately, Hoyland leaves the ball short and Burnley get the ball and they're out on the counter-attack again. This time around, the decision making was fine because he got his head up, saw Casemiro and tried to make the right pass. But the execution on that pass was really poor again because this was another pass in a promising area that was under hit. Look, Ten Hag will definitely be showing Hoyland all of these clips that I just showed you guys and walking him through ways that he can improve his decision making, whether that's using the right weight of pass or picking the right pass in the final third. But he's not going to go mad about it because despite all the mistakes that we just highlighted in this video, guess what? Hoyland was in the right place at the right time in all five clips that I showed you guys. It's just that in two out of those five clips, he made the right decision, and in three out of five, he did. So Ten Hag's message to Hoyland will actually be, keep making sure that you find yourself in the right place at the right time, five, six, seven, eight times a game, and we'll work on improving your decision making from about 40% that it was in this game to 60, 70, 80, 90%. Because that right there is the difference between Hoyland and the top strikers. Whether you look at Holland and Mbappe, they are absolute machines that get 80, 90, 95% of their decisions right in most games. And Ronaldo and Messi in their primes were even better at this than Holland and Mbappe can ever be. So if Rasmus Hoyland can start picking out the right players, the right way to pass, there's no telling how high his ceiling can be because he can already hold up the play really well and has decent attacking intelligence. What do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy, and I'll see you next time.